Hey guys, welcome back. So our next project is going to be dealing with photo manipulation. Um, I know you guys are really excited about this topic. I'm sure you're really looking forward to creating some funny memes or some funny pictures that you can trick your friends with. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do that with a couple of different techniques that we're going to be practicing in this project. So I'm looking right here at your Google Classroom where I've posted the assignment, light bulb photo manipulation. This is what we're going to be starting with. This is a simple little project that's going to give you guys the chance to experiment with some of these photo manipulation techniques in Photopea or Photoshop if that's what you're using. So I've got my example right here. We're going to be doing what I'm going to call like a little world inside of a light bulb, kind of like an idea. You know, a light bulb is a symbol for an idea. And I want you guys to think about this in those terms, that this is a little idea of like a little world inside of a light bulb. So this is my example that I did. A little dolphin kind of sticking his head out of the water inside a light bulb. I've got here your criteria and step-by-step -step instructions for how you're going to complete this assignment. So you're going to watch this video first all the way through before you start so you know what you're doing. You are going to use the techniques that I'm going to be teaching you to create an imaginary scene contained inside of a light bulb. You're going to create your photo manipulation in Photopea or Photoshop if you have it. You're going to use a minimum of three photographs to compose your image. You're going to use the pen tool to trace because I want you guys to practice using the pen tool. We're going to use it to cut out the different images you're going to be combining together. Then you're going to be experimenting with using the eraser to seamlessly blend your photographs together and convincing uh, image. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of show you what I've been playing around in Photopea with. So I've got two examples of this actually. And I'm just going to show you just kind of how mine's composed before I show you how I did it. Um, like I said, you're going to be using three photographs for your project. And so I'm going to show what that looks like. So I've got my light bulb, I've got my dolphin, and I've actually got this water. Those are all three different pictures that I combined together to create this conversation. So I'm going to get rid of the dolphin first. There he goes. And then I'm going to get rid of my water. And then I've got my light bulb. So you can kind of see how that's all layered together. So you guys are going to be thinking about how you're going to combine photographs. So the first one's going to be the light bulb, of course, and then you're going to think of two other images you can combine together to create this imaginary little world of yours. I've got another one I can show you. This one's a little bit different and I decided to do um, like a grass landscape. So I found this landscape and I found this tornado. So I'm going to turn the tornado off so you can see how I added that in and then the landscape itself. So I want you guys to be thinking of interesting little scenes that you could be creating by combining a couple of different photographs into this little light bulb to create an imaginary scene. All right. So to begin our project, uh, you're going to, of course, read all the directions that I just talked about. You're going to open Photopea. And we're going to create a new project. And of course, you want to name it. I'm grading you guys on whether or not you are naming your files correctly at this point. So make sure you're doing this first before you go any further. This one, we are going to be naming your name light bulb. So I'm going to write Mrs. Wade light bulb. And I am going to choose five by seven. I just like that size. I think it's a good size. And I am going to invert it so it's landscaped. And I'm going to hit create. Okay, so uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can find photographs to combine to create your photo manipulation. Um, some of you guys were able to copy the Batman image and paste it onto your Photopea document. That is something you can do here as well. But what you might have noticed if you haven't already is that if you go right here on Photopea, I'll get my little thingy. Um, there is a gallery that you can click and that will allow you to choose from photographs that are already available in this little application. So to get my light bulb, what I did is I clicked here where it says keywords and I wrote in light bulb. You can see it's kind of already popped up because I already did it before, but I'm just going to go ahead and write it in and I hit enter and that searched for pictures of light bulbs that they already have in this little library of photographs that you can choose from. So I'm just going to scroll down 
until I find just a light bulb on a white background. And I have a couple that you can choose from here. You just gotta scroll for a minute to find them. So there's one right there, another one right there. And I think, yeah, I think I chose this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that, choose that one again. And to close the gallery, I'm gonna click that little icon right here. Again, it's right here. To open it, you click it. And to close it, you click it again. And if you notice, when I clicked on that light bulb, that image automatically appeared on my canvas. So that was really easy. So if you are having trouble copying and pasting images on your Batman assignment, this might be the way to go. You can, of course, always go to Google and type in light bulb. Hit enter. And then you can hit images to just get images. And of course, there's lots of light bulbs for you to choose from here. But you're going to have to do that thing where you click on the light bulb and you select copy and then paste. So that may work for you. If, you, if you're very particular about what kind of light bulb you'd like to use, that is what you can do. Or you can simply do the one from the gallery that I found. All right. Now we're going to use the move tool to arrange this light bulb on your canvas, wherever it is that you want it to be. So the move tool is located right up here. It is the top arrow on top of this toolbar right here. You hover over it, it says move tool. And the quick command for that is V. So if you hit V on your computer, it will move the toolbar or the tool that you've selected to be the move tool. If you've selected the move tool and you have your image of your light bulb selected, but you don't see these borders around your light bulb that allow you to click and drag and manipulate the shape and size of your light bulb, look over to your top toolbar screen. When you click on your move tool, you'll get your settings for that tool that you can switch up here on the top bar and you want to make sure that transform controls is checked there's a little box next to it you want to make sure that there's a little check mark next to it if it's not checked you won't be able to see those little border control options around your image so if you're you have your move tool selected like that and you're moving it around but you're not seeing those borders you just need to make sure that you've clicked transform controls and they should appear and allow you to move and stretch and drag the shape and size of your light bulb so what i'm going to do first i'm just going to click on it and drag it around because i have the move tool selected this allows me to move it around and if you hover over the corner, you'll see the arrow kind of turn into this little double curved arrow, and that's going to allow you to rotate it. So you can rotate it around just like this. If you hold the shift key while you're rotating, it will snap to the like degrees. So you can go to 90 degrees in one way, 90 degrees in the other, or all the way around, but it will snap, uh, meaning it will be nice and straight for you. If you don't hold shift, it will allow you to kind of like move it a little bit more like this, but it might be kind of tilted. And if you want it to just snap in place, you can hold shift and do that. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to pull it actually down here into the corner and I'm going to click this little corner right here and I'm going to drag it out. So what you might notice as you're dragging is if you kind of go up in one direction or up in the other direction, it might stretch your light bulb out and kind of distort it. And you might not want it to do that. So instead of just clicking and dragging, we're going to hold shift and that's going to lock the proportions of the picture as you make it larger. So that way it won't stretch out and get kind of like warped on you. All right. So I'm just stretching that out to make it as big as I want it to be. And then I'm going to hit enter. And that's just going to confirm the movements that I just made. If you don't hit enter, it's not going to let you do anything else uh, to edit this light bulb until you do. So there, I've got my light bulb. The next thing we want to do is this is an image file that's attached to a new layer. And if we go to like, I don't know, the paintbrush, and we try to paint on it you're going to get a little message that says smart object must be rasterized first. Rasterize and you're going to click OK. And that's just going to allow you to actually add on top of that picture on that layer. 
what we're going to do now is you guys are going to use the pen tool, just like we did before, to trace along the inside of this light bulb to delete the inside because we want to be able to place the images that we're going to be using to create our little imaginary scene inside this light bulb. And to cut this out and delete it, we're going to be using the pen tool. So I'm going to make sure I select, select the pen tool and I'm just going to start tracing around the inside of this light bulb. If you zoom in, you kind of see where there's a bit of a natural shadow that goes along the edge. And I'm just going to use that as like my little line that I'm going to trace. So I'm going to start right here at the edge of the light bulb. And I'll start down here. And by clicking and dragging my pen tool, I'm going to create a line that goes all the way around. So what I actually want to do is I don't want it to have a fill or a stroke. So I'm going to click this little red box. So both my fill and my stroke have a white box with a red X. So now I'm just going to have this little blue line that shows the path of my pen tool and I'm going to trace with that. All right, so I'm going to keep going up and around to create this little trace inside of the light bulb. And this is going to be where I'm going to cut out to allow space to put a new image inside of this light bulb. Okay. So remember to get, if you're having trouble with your pen tool not going in the right direction, you can hold down Alt and click to get rid of that anchor and that will allow you to better control where you want that pen tool shape to go. So the nice thing about the pen tool is that it allows you to draw some pretty well drawn shapes with a nice smooth edge without having like a pen tool or a device where you're actually drawing on the computer or on a tablet since a lot of you guys don't have access to that. This allows you to kind of make a nice drawing with just using your mouse, which is why it's I think using the pen tool and learning how to use it is important for you guys. All right, so I've created this trace that goes all the way around my light bulb and I've connected to where I started. So it's a nice big shape now all connected with no holes in it. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to right click and a little tab that says make selection is going to appear and I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And what that's gonna do is the area that I've drawn around the inside of this light bulb is now selected. So when I click here on my photo, you see like that create a new shape for my pen tool where I did that area. If I click down here on to the layer that has my light bulb picture, you'll see these little dotted lines. And that means that everything inside of those dotted lines has been selected. So I could just simply hit backscape and that will delete everything in that light bulb. Let me do that again. So when you just hit Backscape, it deletes that little area. But if you look kind of closely at it, you'll see it's got like a really, really hard edge and you can kind of tell exactly where it was cut out. And I'd like to get a bit of a softer edge when I am deleting this. So I'll show you how I do that. I'm gonna go back to where I have the selection. So once I've made my selection, I'm going to go up here I'm going to go to the layer menu up at the top of the screen. And when I click on it, uh, oops, sorry, I'm going to go to select. I'm going to the select menu at the top of my screen. And from these options, I am going to go down to where it says modify. And I'll get a couple more options when I do this. And I am going to choose the one that says feather. And when I click on that, I get a new menu or settings window right here. And I'm going to look at the number that's in this box right here. So it says five and then it says PX and this stands for pixels. So yours might say zero or one in this box. So if it does, you're going to change it 
to five. And what this is going to do is it is going to blur the five pixels out from the edge of this dotted line right here. You can make it more than five pixels or you can make it less. But five has worked pretty well for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with that number. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. And now once I have selected that feather option, I can now hit backspace as long as I have my light bulb layer selected. And that will delete the inside of my light bulb. So let me go ahead and deselect my area so I get rid of this dotted line. And I'll zoom in and you can see how I've made this nice blurry line where the edge of our light bulb, where the area has been deleted is. And this will make it easier to add pictures inside and blend them more smoothly. So it will look more realistic, like there is actually things in here that are living inside this light bulb. If we go back a little bit and we go back to select, modify and go to feather and I increase it to 10 pixels and hit OK and then delete the inside of this selection. We can go in and we can see that it's even more blurry now. So the more pixels you choose to feather, the blurrier the edge of this cut will appear. So that will help you cut out your images to make them transition a little bit more smoothly. Okay, so now I have an empty light bulb and it's just waiting for me to pop some little pictures inside to create my imaginary scene. So I'm going to be showing you guys how I did that little dolphin um, because I thought that was a really nice little simple uh, image to pop in there. So I'm going to go back to my photograph gallery and click right there. And I found my dolphin, or actually I did the water first. So I'm going to write in water. I think I might have wrote in wave. I think I wrote in wave. So I'm going to write in wave this time. Okay. And I'm just going to take a look at um, the different photographs that are available. And I'm going to find one that I think will work really well inside of this light bulb space. So a lot of them have like backgrounds and stuff that you're going to have to think about how that's going to look when you incorporate it into your light bulb. And I know I had one that I already picked, so I'm just kind of trying to find that one again and just showing you guys all the different like types of photographs that you can kind of pick from. You might end up searching for a bit before you find the one that's just right for you. Here it is. This is the one that I picked right here. And I liked this one because it had like a really close up edge of water right here and then kind of like an empty sky in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And that's going to pop that little picture right into my area and I'm gonna close the gallery. I want to zoom out. So I hit Z to get my magnifying glass and I hold Alt while I click and that's going to just let me zoom out in, instead of zooming in. And I'm going to hit V because I want to select this picture. You can see that the picture opened on its own layer right here. And I'm just going to hold Shift and drag this picture to make it bigger. And I kind of just want to cover my light bulb with it just to make sure it's going to be the right size. Um, and I'm going to pull that underneath my light bulb. So now it's, you can see that it's inside. All right. So I'm going to move it around a little bit more. I think I'm going to actually make it smaller now. So it fits nicely inside of my light bulb. Okay. And now I'm going to show you a kind of a neat little trick that will allow this to be a little bit more convincing of a photo manipulation. So while you have this move before you hit enter um, using the move tool, you will notice that up here there is a bunch of settings that you can choose from. And I'm looking for the one that says when you click warp, it's going to change to having these little boxes on each corner but it also has a box kind of like a, in a grid shape around this picture. And by clicking and dragging these different little boxes, you can actually warp and distort this photograph. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm just gonna click this and drag it. 
And that's just gonna pick that one area of that picture. And if I drag it, it's gonna go up like that. And it creates this kind of interesting curve. And I can click here and drag it down. And that warps the photograph kind of down in that direction. So I'm kind of going for almost like a snow globe kind of like effect where it looks like the water is kind of sloshing around inside of the light bulb just to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic. I think I'm going to pull that up a little bit as well. And I might even pull, let me see, I think I'll pull this one down a little bit more. All right. There. I like how that looks. I'm going to hit enter. And that's just going to make everything that I just did official. And now I've got this kind of nice shape of my water picture that kind of looks like, you know, it's it's fitting inside of this light bulb a little bit better. So if I turn this on and off, you'll notice that, you know, you can kind of see picture the picture popping up behind where the area of the light bulb ends. Um, I would like to erase this using the eraser tool. So I'm going to select the eraser tool. But you might notice when you go and try to erase that, you're going to get another notification asking you to rosterize it. So we're going to have to click OK and rosterize that photograph before we can erase from it. So I'm just making my eraser nice and big. And I'm just going to erase this extra area that's sticking out of my light bulb. Just so I have a nice clean photograph of just the light bulb and what's inside of it. All right, so that's picture number two. Now I just need to add one more thing to make this a complete project. Um, my example had a dolphin in it, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that dolphin back in. So again, go into my little gallery right here. And I'm going to type in dolphin. And I'm just going to look for just the right dolphin that I feel like is going to fit in this little light bulb with this water that I just picked. I've got lots of options, but I want to find the one that I used before. And I'll show you when I find it what that looks like. I think it was this one. I think it was. Yep, that's the one. Okay. Anyways, so to kind of play with my dolphin image a little bit, I'm going to turn some of these layers off so I can just see it a little bit better. So I'm going to turn off my light bulb. I'm going to turn off my water. And now I can just see my dolphin shape. And I'm going to use my move tool to kind of drag him over here to the middle. And this is where I'm going to use my pen tool again, because what I want to do is I want to trace this dolphin around. We're going to be using the pen tool to trace around this dolphin and then delete everything that's in the background. Because I just want the dolphin and maybe a little bit of the part of him coming out of the water. And I want to delete everything else so I don't have to worry about this background being in that photograph that I already have. I already have water in my other photographs, so I don't need this water. I just need the dolphin. So I'm going to just go ahead and zoom in on the dolphin. I'm going to get my pen tool. And I'm going to start tracing around the dolphin to kind of cut him out from the background. So I think I'm going to start down here, just where his little flipper is, and start tracing my line. Remember, hold Alt and click to get rid of that handle to allow you to have more control over where your line is going to go. Sometimes you may not have to get rid of the anchor. Sometimes it's going in the direction that you already need it to be going. Sometimes you do. So it's just kind of a matter of whether or not you need to do that. I had to do that part over again because I messed up. Okay. Sometimes you can just do a straight line because that's what makes sense for that part of the line that you're drawing. Straight lines are definitely the easiest. All right, so right now I've got these teeny tiny little teeth. I'm not going to worry about going around every single one of these little teeth because for one, that's going to take forever. And for another, I have a bit of an easier technique to get in there. And I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm just going to trace right over those teeth. My cat wants attention, you guys. He's going to have to wait, though. 
So I'm leaving a little bit of that water kind of like in between each of these teeth as I'm tracing over, but I'll worry about that in a second. I'm gonna zoom in so I can see a little bit better around this area of the mouth that I'm tracing. So I'm just tracing the outside of the dolphin. I don't wanna worry about going like inside of his mouth or anything. I just wanna make sure I'm cutting him out from the water in the background. So if you notice this little hand kind of popping up, I'm holding down my space bar and that makes the hand tool disappear, the hand tool up here. And when I hold that down, I can actually just move it around to adjust the area that I'm looking at to make it just a little bit easier to work. Using these quick commands allows you to just kind of work a little bit more fluidly without having to stop and pick out a new tool and kind of interrupting your workflow as much. The more you practice with it, the kind of easier uh, it gets to kind of just switch between tools. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start working my way down the dolphin's head. I'm gonna zoom out now because I can see this area a little bit better that way. Okay, so as I'm going around the bottom of the dolphin, I kind of want to include just a little bit of the part of his body that goes underneath the water. That's going to allow me to blend this picture in with the other picture of water a little bit more seamlessly and more convincing. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball a little area kind of around his body with the pen tool. Now I'm clicking and dragging, and it's just this, this gets easier the more you use the pen tool. It may seem kind of like I'm going really fast right now. It's just because I have practiced a lot with a pen tool and kind of understand how to make it the curves in the straight areas. Okay, so now I've got my selection. The pen tool has gone all the way around my dolphin. And I am now with the pen tool selected, going to make sure that I right click and hit make selection. All right, so now the inside of the dolphin is all selected. And now I'm going to go to select. I'm going to go to inverse because I want to select the area on the outside of the dolphin. I'm going to make sure I've clicked on my picture of the dolphin and I'm going to hit backspace. It wants me to rasterize it. So I'm gonna go and click rasterize and now I'm gonna hit backspace again. And there it goes. Now I just have the dolphin sticking out of the water and a little bit of the water underneath him. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit control D or if you want, you can select and go to D select right here. Again, it's control D. And that will get rid of that selection that we just made. So now we have our dolphin all by himself. So like I was telling you, I have some of the water still kind of showing in here in between his teeth. And I told you I would show you an easier way to get rid of that. And I'm going to do that now. And if you're nitpicky like me and you want to go and delete that, I'll show you the easy way to do that without having to go use the pen tool to go all the way around them. So I'm just going to use my magnifying glass and zoom in. All right. And now I'm going to select the eraser tool right here. And I'm going to select with the eraser tool, like a soft brush that's kind of blurry around the edges. And I'm just gonna go in and kind of just like really gently erase that water that's kind of showing behind his teeth. All right. So that's a quick way to do that. I got rid of the majority of it with the pen tool. And now I'm just kind of getting rid of those little nitpicky areas with just the eraser tool. Okay. All right, I think that's good enough. All right, so now I have my dolphin. I'm gonna turn my light bulb back on. I'm gonna turn my ocean back on. And now I'm gonna click on my dolphin and I'm gonna click on my move tool. And I can go ahead and move him wherever I want and I can rotate him and I can make him smaller by clicking shift and then cl clicking this corner and dragging in to make him a little bit smaller. 
All right. And the last thing I'm going to do is again to kind of make this look a little bit more seamless. If we look kind of like right down here with our zoom, we can kind of see there's a bit of a hard line kind of like, you know, showing where the picture of the dolphin begins and the picture of the water is kind of over him. So to make this a little bit more smooth, I'm going to select my eraser tool again, and I'm going to select that soft brush mechanical tool. I'm going to click on the opacity and turn that down to about 50%. I'm also going to click the flow and turn that to 50%. And I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And now making sure that my dolphin layer is selected, I'm going to go up with my eraser and just start erasing that edge. And you see the opacity is turned down. So only a little bit is being erased at a time with a nice soft edge, not a hard edge. And I'm just smoothing that line that separates the dolphin from the background out and making it blend a little bit by just slowly erasing it around the area behind the water. All right, pretty seamless, huh? Looks like he was there to begin with. So you turn him off, turn him on, and he kind of blends right in. So once you're happy with the little scene that you've created inside your light bulb, you can save it and turn it in. One thing you might notice uh, when you created your trace using the pen tool, it created a new layer with that shape for each of the traces that you made. So for example, for my light bulb, it created a layer in the shape of that light bulb. So I can kind of go back anytime I want and I have that trace still there and I can right click after having selected the pen tool and make another selection and change it or edit it, I can do the same thing with the dolphin. You can see the cuts originally down here because I took the picture that I manipulated and moved it, but that shape is still there. So those are like always there if you ever wanna go back and adjust or change them. If you did this really quickly and you're comfortable with how the process goes, feel free to make another one like I did and experiment with different scenes and different photographs uh, that you're combining together. It can be a lot of fun to kind of think of different, you know, little scenes that you can create inside of this light bulb. So we're going to turn this in now. So again, you're going to go to File, Save as PSD, and Save as, or Export as JPEG. So just so you're aware, if you are ever able to access Photoshop, you can open these files that you're saving on Photopea in Photoshop. And they uh, work just the same. And you can continue editing them and working on them as if you created them in Photoshop all along. It's another reason I enjoy using this program to help you guys learn how to do these different graphic experimental things and stuff. So both of those are downloaded. So you're going to go to your assignment in Google Classroom, click View Assignment, click Add or Create, uh, upload either from your Google Drive if you're on your Chromebook or from a file if you're on a regular computer. Select your file, find where it downloaded to, right here, got it, open, upload. And then, of course, once you see your little preview show up under your work, you can go ahead and turn it in and you're all done. So have fun. I can't wait to see the creative little scenes that you guys come up with.